What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2019 Mazda MX-5 Miata RF. Huge thanks to Mazda for providing me with the RF version of the Miata here to review for you guys today. So about the Miata RF, well, you know, this was introduced a couple of years ago now, but uh, this year it gets that new engine that the standard uh, soft top Miata's got, and it's fantastic. You can go watch my review that I did several months ago on the soft top version with this new engine. I absolutely love it. Uh, and so basically the RF just gives you a target top kind of instead of a full convertible, and uh, but instead gives you a very sleek hard top that I think looks fantastic. And that's the main standout feature. I mean, all Miatas look really good, and this one has the accessory like side still extensions and the front lip air and all those types of things to the arrow kit I guess to give it a more aggressive look here um, but that removable hard top there is just so cool it's power operated and um, in some pictures I wasn't in love with the three-fourths uh, kind of quarter rear quarter shot there it didn't look great but in person it really works at least in this color I love the way it looks and now you can even get like a black roof for the uh, middle part that's painted as that makes it look even sleeker but I think it's it actually looks really really good here in person at least so yeah it just is like around 100 to 150 pounds heavier than a normal Miata and that's really the only sacrifice you make you just have to pay a little bit more money for the RF of course uh, but you know you, this one even has the BBS and Brembo package so you have these 17 inch BBS wheels that are a little lighter that are forged and you also have those bigger Brembo brakes and while the look has been around for several years now I still think that it looks fantastic. Right, so the interior of the Miata. So it's the same great Miata we all know and love from the past several years. This one is a club trim and it has the Recaro package. So that's the main thing that you're going to notice here are these Recaro seats, which are definitely on the firmer side and they have the Alcantara. They do have more support though, for sure, by far than these standard Miata seats. Um, so it's just gonna come down to personal preference and body type. Personally, I like the support in these, but I, I honestly had no complaints with support in the normal Miata seats. And so uh, these being a little bit firmer, I actually prefer the additional comfort of the regular seats you get in the uh, you know sport and grand touring trims or even the club without the Recaro package and um, you know so it just depends but I do prefer the full leather you get in those two versus the Alcantara you have in the middle of these but they're still very nice seats and both seats uh, in these higher trims here have the Bose uh, speakers built into the headrest as well which is very cool especially when you're on a phone call because it only uses these speakers on a phone call and makes it feel like you actually have the phone up against your ear which is kind of cool next is the steering wheel here in the Miata which is the same great steering wheel we all know and love from the Miata and so it has a nice thin rim to it here uh, a great nine and three grip nice ten and two notches just a few buttons here on it very simple and basic and uh, you know I like the trim you have on it that looks like metal uh, but you know is actually plastic but still just looks very nice and overall just still a great steering wheel gauges are also great here in the Miata again simple but effective and uh, again for a small little roadster this is all you really want in order to you know make sure the weight is nice and low so you have a big tack front and center with a gear indicator there that's what that little digital portion is and then an analog speedometer and then on the left you have a digital portion there which will show you just a few basic trip computer things very very basic uh, readout there but one cool thing it does have is since this is a retractable hardtop it will actually give you an animation of the top going down in real time this one now is a full color display instead of the monochromatic display you used to have in Miatas and so that's a very cool little upgrade there but otherwise you know just great great gauges coming over to the center of the dashboard here you have this uh, seven inch uh, touchscreen display uh, whenever you're parked and then whenever you're driving you have to use the controller. The same uh, system that's been in other Mazdas since I think 2013 and it's a good system. Um, it does the basics well enough. I do like the controller you know always had this really nice uh, metallic feel to it um, but it just was a little overly complicated to do basic functions. So changing radio stations you got to go into the sub menu and then pull up uh, that menu and uh, go through. Now you can set your favorites with this little star button and then those you can uh, scroll through very very quickly and easily so that's kind of the way to uh, do this once you own one of these is to just program all of those and then it makes it much simpler to tune and move around in radio stations and sources and things like that um, and otherwise this one has navigation which isn't anything the right home about um, and unfortunately this one doesn't come standard with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto but Mazda has rolled that out as a dealer retrofit kit that you can now do I believe it's about 200 bucks this doesn't have it but you have that capability so if you wanted 
to have your dealership install that, then it would be capable of running Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I think is a, a no-brainer, definitely worth doing. That helps to keep it a little bit more modern, because otherwise this would start to feel dated if it didn't have that smartphone capability. Coming down, you have just your standard uh, climate control here, which is all manual. In the club, Grand Touring, you do get auto, but uh, I mean, works well enough. And then you have heated seats here in the club too, which is a nice thing to have. And then just a little pocket beneath that, uh, the, where you'll see your two USB jacks, an auxiliary jack, and also a slot that will fit like an iPhone 10, like my iPhone 10 without a case will fit in there just fine. But any larger phone than that, uh, you're gonna have trouble fitting it in there. Uh, but nice to have, you know, again, for a small vehicle like this, to have a couple little storage spaces is appreciated. Another little storage space is right here, uh, this little elbow rest, which is nice and softly padded actually. Um, that has, uh, you know, a tiny little space. You can't even fit a cell phone in there. But good to have that. Nothing in the doors here. Uh, but I do love how the doors have this body colored uh, panel here on the club and higher trim so you don't get on the base one. Uh, and then you have these two cup holders here in the back uh, that are removable um, and you can put one towards the front here if you'd like. And uh, they're a little flimsy, not great cup holders, but again, in a vehicle this small, uh, not a huge concern. Uh, there isn't any glove box either in the Miata. That's another kind of compromise uh, that you make with the Miata. But ben uh, behind these seats here, you do have this little area and that's where you will find your owner's manual. That's where they store it. So that gives you an idea of how big um, that space is there, about the size of an owner's manual. And you can fit a few things on there, sunglasses, cases, things like that, all fit in there with ease. One compromise of the RF is that uh, you used to have um, storage spaces behind both of these seats here. Now, the driver's side one is blocked off, so I'm assuming they had to sacrifice that in order to make room for some of the uh, retractable roof mechanism. But on the passenger side there, it still is retained. I believe it looks a tiny bit smaller than I remember it being, um, but I think it is the same size over there on that side. So that's good. You at least have that for it, a little bit of additional space. Um, and so, you know, again, the Miata has never, that's never been a strong suit, but it's a tiny little sports car. No one's gonna really worry about that too much, I don't think. But trunk space in the Miata is still pretty good. And that is something that is uncompromised by the retractable hardtop here, which is appreciated because other vehicles sometimes do make a sacrifice in the trunk area there with that. and so. So, um, yeah, it still is a nice, a pretty deep space there. You could fit, you know, like a carry-on size suitcase, I think would fit in there okay. And um, so, again, small amount of space, but it is bigger than some competitors. Like, I think even like a Jaguar F-Type has a smaller trunk than this. So, I mean, for its size, it does a really good job, I think, honestly. All right, so sort of go for a drive. Uh, the Miata here has this, uh, the old Mazda key, which I really love, actually. It's just this nice, slim key, has the metal buttons there on it and just, I'm gonna miss this key because now all the newer Mazdas are getting a larger key. But uh, of course, it's keyless access, keyless entry and push button starts. So you just leave the key in your pocket, put the clutch in, hit the engine start button, and it reverse to life. All right, so setting off in the 2019 Mazda Miata RF. So the first thing you notice is that, uh, you know, everything is so precise. Uh, you know, it, it, the first, if you've never driven a Miata before, I mean, the throttle response is a whole nother level. It's just it's so delicately razor sharp. I mean, just a tiny little wiggle of your toe will get you an immediate response. It's really amazing. Brakes also have a lighter but really good feeling, very solid, especially with the Recaro package. Um, visibility is also spectacular, of course, with pretty thin A-pillars um, and even a little A-pillar window here, which is uh, totally unnecessary, but great to have. Um, it's just excellent view forward and view out of the back is also good and the seat pillar isn't too bad either there you know you would think that might be a little bit getting in the way there but it's actually not and out on the main road here now uh, you know the Miata I think is a little more refined here with the RF so you know obviously I do have the top off you know the target top I guess you can say and um, you know it still gives you a very uh, you know, airy feeling. I don't really feel like I'm missing out on a whole lot compared to a, the normal soft top Miata. Otherwise though, you know, the uh, Miata's always been a pretty comfortable vehicle to drive around in. Now the club one does have slightly stiffer springs than what you get in the Grand Touring trim. Um, so that is something you're going to feel a little bit more of the bounciness than you do with, uh, you know, the softer sprung Miatas. But uh, this still is, you know, totally compliant, totally da daily drivable if you'd like to. Um, and uh, yeah, but you know, this one especially with these seats being a little firmer again you just feel everything a little bit more so if you want that higher uh, feeling of rawness uh, then you certainly get that more here with the club one for sure but let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does here we go there's that wonderfully sweet red line <laughs> yes sir oh yeah the new Miatas are so fantastic 
fantastic. So uh, just like the normal 2019 Miatas, you know, you have a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine that now revs to 7,500 RPMs, does 181 horsepower, which is a little bit more than it used to, 151 pound feet of torque still, and zero to 60 for a regular Miata in 2019 here is uh, gonna be 5.7 seconds. Now the RF version here is between the, about 110 to 150 pounds heavier. So it might slow it down a little bit, but I, I'm thinking it would still be a sub six seconds zero to 60 car. So still, I mean, feels just as punchy. Hasn't felt any slower to me so far. And in this one, it's all running through this very slick shifting six speed manual, which just feels great. And it's new for the NDs here. And just, it's just a really, really nice feeling shifter. You can also get a six speed automatic if you'd like. Um, it's not a bad automatic since it's still a traditional automatic. It's just the shifts aren't as fast as you know you'd want in an enthusiast vehicle uh, manually at least. And uh, I think it's just more fun to do the manual shifting yourself here. So uh, that would be my recommendation. But if you really don't want to drive a manual, it's good that they offer the automatic too. All right, so now I'm driving with the roof up and uh, this road is a little rougher, uh, but you can just tell that you know it is a little more insulated maybe than the soft top. But to me, it doesn't transform it. Uh, and this is still the Miata experience for you. You're getting a lot of road noise, you're getting a little bit of wind noise, um, and it's just a little bit more of a raw experience once again. And that part of that is because you have the lightweight, so you have less sound bending, you have a smaller vehicle, so there's just less to absorb the sound. And uh, that's okay though, again, it goes back to it being really really fun and engaging sports car um, but just you know I've you know seen other places where people say wow the like retractable hardtop really transforms the experience here and I think you know it gives you a little bit more of a insulated feel I guess but it's not it's not night and day to me at least at least so far I'm gonna have to you know drive this around all week and uh, do my fair share of top up and top down driving and kind of compare but now we're on a back road here and let's see if that additional 100 to 150 pounds of weight has affected the Miata here as we you know go around a few tighter corners here nothing super tight I'm not autocrossing it or anything but just for the sake of comparison here I mean, I've noticed, you know, I mean, the Miata is still a very light vehicle. I mean, the soft tops are about 23.54, and so at its worst, this is going to be about 2,500 pounds, which is still way lighter than everything else out there uh, that this competes against, honestly. And, um, you know, trying to pitch it into a corner here a little bit, it feels good to me. Now, you know, the club suspension certainly helps kind of give this a flatter feel so you're not feeling any wiggle. Maybe in the, you know, uh, RF versions, the Grand Touring and the Sport, maybe you would feel a little bit more sway since those have softer spring rates. But in this, I I don't really notice a difference, at least at sane speeds here. You know, again, if you're tracking this, you'll probably feel a tiny difference. If you're autocrossing this, you might feel a little bit of a difference um, because again, that weight is kind of higher up, so it's gonna hurt your center of gravity a little bit. But honestly, I mean, it's not holding me back. It's not making me feel any less confident here. It just uh, feels really, really good still. And uh, yeah, it's just, the Miata is just still such a fun car to drive just because you can drive it at legal, normal speeds and still feel like you're kind of on the edge a little bit. Um, just because, you know, it just it feels like it has lower limits. You're only running 205 wide tires, these Bridgestone tires. They're not super grippy, super sticky or anything. So, you know, you, you feel like, you know, your limits aren't super high and that's very easy to change. If you want to just put stickier tires on here, um, it's going to feel like a go-kart. It already does, but you know, you feel like you know, the limits aren't super, super high, but that, that gives you this exciting feeling that I actually prefer with Miata. I don't want it to feel like it has superpowers. I want to have a little bit more excitement, like, oh, you know, kind of uh, doubt yourself every once in a while. I want that feeling, uh, but especially having that feeling at 40 miles an hour is very rare these days in just about anything else that, uh, you know, aims to be sporty. And even a lot of normal family sedans will, you know, handle some pretty intense quartering without a sweat. One more acceleration here. Oh, that's just so sweet. So yeah, but 
that's about all I can really glean here from the Miata and my uh, time of driving here so far. We're going to be driving around all week thanks to Mazda and I'll come back and give you guys some more developed impressions here on it as well as my real world fuel economy here with this slightly heavier RF and anything else that I noticed during my week of driving. Alright so I've been driving the Miata RF here for a week now and I've put 130 miles on it in my time of driving and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So um, one thing that actually really impressed me was my fuel economy here. So I got 29 and a half mpg exactly uh, which is very impressive because these are rated at 29 combined 26 in the city and 34 on the highway so um, to be getting over that combined number whenever I did a decent amount of highway driving but it definitely wasn't 50 percent maybe 40 or 35 percent but I mean I'm getting better than advertised fuel economy which um, I'm very impressed by you know it just means that if you do choose to daily drive one of these it is going to be so economical and easy on your wallet um, and so that's just one of the benefits of having such a light vehicle um, so that's uh, one of the really standout things um, but it wasn't all perfect here in the RF so a couple of things to mention here first is the brakes have um, a lot of dead travel and um, I, I just figured it was probably part of the stiffer Brembo's but I don't remember the previous club that I had uh, for the normal soft top I don't remember that one having such a stiff brake pedal and I feel like usually Miatas have a little bit better feel so I don't know if this one was used for brake testing previously uh, by other journalists or what one thing that does feel spectacular though is the shifter it is just such a delight to use and again I've used this several times in other ND Miatas that I've reviewed but it just never fails to impress me it is just always I mean this is one of the few manuals currently that you can buy new that has zero rev hang just about every other vehicle has some form where the engine just doesn't drop revs as fast as you know you would naturally expect and so if you're trying to shift quickly in other vehicles you kind of have a little bit of a jerkiness this you have a little bit of a jerkiness if you don't shift fast enough because it drops so fast with the rpms that you kind of have to like give a little bit of throttle overrun a lot of times whenever you're shifting if you want to do smooth shifts um and so that's uh you know something i have no complaints about i actually love that but the shifter is also just so light i mean you can actually just use like two fingers to shift it um and so it just means you just flip it around very easily and it just makes for a very relaxing manual experience and also a very fun one because it's just such a precise and uh, still very notchy shifter feels just great they just nailed everything about the Miatas and I already gushed about the 2019 Miata again in my soft top review so if you want to hear more and more uh, gushing you can go watch that video uh, but the RF I think compared to the soft top personally I would still rather have the soft top Here's why. So, um, you know, with the roof up, if you're gonna drive your Miata mostly with the roof up, if you use it as a daily driver and most of the time it's too hot to have the top down or whatever, I see the RF making complete sense. Also, if you want a slightly stiffer vehicle, Mazda does say that the chassis is uh, stiffer here in the RF because of, again, having a rigid roof to kind of uh, hold it in place a little bit better. So, uh, you know, they do kind of think that there, it does have better handling than the soft top. I personally think the handling is basically the same um, with a few caveats. Uh, one thing is that they also, with the RFs here, and this was back in 2017 when they introduced the RF before it got the faster engine here, um, you know, they gave it stiffer spring and dampers to kind of cope with the extra weight up high here um, and I think that's what I was feeling earlier where I was like it, it feels a little stiff and it's not the Bilstein's fault because I had the Bilstein's in both other Miatas that I've uh, reviewed the NDs and those I mean they were a stiffer but I love the way that they felt this um, is actually a little too stiff for what I would want in a daily driver personally and even you know by Miata standards, I prefer the slightly softer ride of even the club soft top. Uh, and then of course, you don't have to get the Bilsteins. You go for like a Grand Touring or a base, you can just get standard uh, dampers, and then you know you have an even softer ride. I personally prefer the softer ride. I think um, this is a little stiffer than I would like, but it's just so much fun to flip around. And it's just, it's so playful, and I just absolutely adore the ND here. Um, but another thing with the RF that I'm not in love with is the C pillar. So whenever I first did my visibility assessment there, it seemed fine. Um, and I will say that, you know, if you have the roof up here, it's going to be about the same visibility over that C pillar as it would be with the soft top up in the normal, uh, you know, convertible Miata. So as far as the roof being up, no difference, nothing worth talking about. But with the roof down, you still do have that C pillar. So in the RF here, you always kind of have a C pillar uh, that's a little bit more obtuse than you would like. I mean, I guess that is slightly better than 
what you get with the soft top because uh, you have a wider view out back there. But it still isn't perfect. And there were a couple of times where I was in intersections where I did have to look uh, through the C-pillar area there. And this was obviously a lot more obstruction than you get with the soft top with the roof down. But even, you know, it just... You know, having the roof off here, you don't get that advantage of having excellent visibility like you do in a normal Miata. So I think if you use a Miata as a weekend car and you always have the roof down, I still think you're better off going for the normal convertible. If you, uh, you know, do daily drive, you're gonna have the roof up most of the time. I think the RF looks much better. It's obviously a little bit stiffer, a little bit quieter in here. Although again, I still don't find a massive difference personally. I would really have to uh, test drive both back to back on louder roads to really get a strong feeling but I, I to me it is quiet I have no complaints with the refinement so no issues whatsoever um, but you know I don't consider that a selling point unless you get again the hard top makes the most sense for you um, but personally I still would definitely rather have the soft top it also is cheaper too so this one as tested is like thirty eight thousand six hundred and twenty dollars now this is fully loaded up has the arrow kit and all this other stuff um, that also adds to the price tag a little bit more but um, if you were to go uh, you know for a lesser option one they are fairly reasonable and they're only I think about $2,700 more expensive than a comparable model now you can't get an RF in the base so that's why if you look at the configurator there's a huge difference between the starting price of an RF and the starting price of a regular Miata but that's just because they don't offer the RF in the base so the lowest RF you can get is a club and so you can't also get the Grand Touring um, and that would give you again a little bit of a softer setup I think um, so maybe something worth considering there going for Grand Touring uh, and not getting the uh, GTS pack or whatever it isn't that much more expensive so if you really do think that the hardtop is a better way to go I think 2700 bucks is a reasonable upcharge uh, you know for this top here uh, but yeah I would save the money and I would go for you know a standard Miata because uh, they're just fantastic it is also lighter for the standard Miata too not like it's a huge big deal or anything but um, you know it's just another thing to note there one other thing I want to mention here real briefly is some people uh, have been comparing this with the BRZ and the Toyota 86 now from a cross shopping standpoint and um, you know now that this does have this nicer hard top it is a little bit more of a closer competitor but um, you know this is still a little bit more expensive than a BRZ or an 86 even fully loaded those are you know 30 um, but I will say if you don't mind paying the few thousand dollars premium here for the RF then you're able to one have the option of having a convertible experience and you also have a peppier vehicle even though you know this is less horsepower than those the gearing is better and it's lighter so this actually feels much quicker to me than my old BRZ did or 86 or something like that. Um, so personally, to me, the choice is pretty easy. I would definitely pick this over a BRZ or an 86. But anyway, like I said, I absolutely love my time here in the Miata RF. Let me know your thoughts on the Miata in the comments below and whether you go for an RF or a soft top. Huge thanks to Mazda for providing me with the RF here to review for you guys today. And uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.